All right, I'm back. Captain Paul Powis, good friend of mine, has been the guy teaching me all summer long on how to do this downrigging deal, because that's not normally my deal. So this is one of the most confusing things to me when, when you told me about fishing yep. this way. So this is a dipsy diver. It's made by Lure Jensen, and you are an expert at this, because I'm not even gonna try to explain this, so. Explain what it does, how it does it, how to set it and up. And why it does it, okay. Cool, so the first thing you're gonna do when you get it out of the package and people make the mistake is you gotta hook it up to this snap part goes to the rod. That's a mistake people make, okay? It's not ready to I'm go- sure I made that mistake. It's so. not re ready to go out of the package. These two little jaws put tension on this. Okay, so let me hold that a little closer. To and there's a set screw down. there. So and I didn't understand this either. So this is the release, if I understand correctly. Yes. And this is the screw Paul is talking about. So if you're fishing for kings, you want to tighten it up a little more that it's going to take a big enough fish to trip it. So this dipsy, you can set it, and I'll get Paul to do that. It's going to go out on an angle, whichever side of the boat you're running on. And this is the release. Correct. To so you're it. not fighting against the, the dipsy. angle. Right. right. You're so pulling from here, a lot you're fighting of, the fish and not the dipsy. A lot of people that will get the dipsy will tighten that up too much, and they can't get it to pop. Right. So you, you want to find that, that way. Yes. You want to find that sweet spot where it's not gonna go off on its own just for, from the propulsion of the boat. Okay. But yet, yet it'll still go off. Another little trick that a lot of people don't take into account, I use 30 pound power pro. There's no stretch in it. So when I tell this dipsy that I wanna pull the trigger, all I gotta do is give it a snap like this with the rod and it pops. Right, if so you have you're mono, really to reset or move? Yeah, if you have mono on this, it's yeah. just a giant brown, 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 and it won't really. Yeah, it just burns time. Right. right. So the next part of it is, these are directional, and here's a mistake a lot of folks make. If you look at this close, you put it up to the camera, Derek, for me, please. Sure. And I'll, that's you a zero and I'll walk through it. So that's it's, a zero setting. Yeah. So, so right now it's not doing it. It's not going to go any direction, but down. Straight back behind the boat. Yes. If I set it to a one left, it's going to run out to the side of the boat to the left. If I send it to a two left, it's further out to the side. If I send it to a three left, it's further out, and I I call all the way to the end, I call that a four setting. Okay, that's about the right increment. So so that's really important. See, I, tr I struggled with this at first. So, so you got a left and a right and the, how far out you want it from the boat. So, and in, in your case, you're running 10 to 12 rods and you have these stacked out. I run from three. each other. And a common mistake that a lot of people make is they think a one is deep. So if you let them all back 100, 100 at a one, 200 at a one, uh, or, yeah, 100 at a 1, 100 at a 2, and 100 at a 3, the 1 will be deeper and not as far away from the boat. Okay. The 2 will be not as deep but further away from the boat. The 3 will be not as deep and even further from the boat. Gotcha. So a general misconception that a lot of people have is deeper. So what I do, and I call I had it, that. I know for a fact I've done that. So what I call time. it is, is the, the plus 20. So if I set... If say my fish are going good at 80 to one, I know in my head that t at 100 to two is gonna be, the one will be here, the two is here. It's just off to the side. Picture your dipsies like sitting in the church in a pew. Yeah. Socially distanced and apart, six feet apart. Pro they're probably 15 feet apart, but they're in the same depth, in the same zone. Gotcha. So I do it the 20 rule. So I go 100 or 80 to one, 100 to two, 120 to three, and they're all catching fish. And they're all staying away from each other, so you're not tangling. They're away from each other. When they get bit, they come back behind the boat. So the farthest one out is back farther, so it drifts back behind it's everything not, else. Well, it's got more line out. It's got yes. more line out. Right. Okay. All right. So that 20, it'll clear over the other. So a lot of people are on the misconception that if you catch a fish on the outside one, you got to reel in the front too. They leave them in the hole. They're there. They're down in it and around. The fish will come across the back. Okay, last thing I want to talk about, you can explain to me. And this is called a snubber, right? Correct. And there's several manufacturers that make these. Yes. Um, and this goes between the dipsy and your leader. Yes. Obviously, bait on the other end. And explain why. Why do we need this shock absorber? Well, because snubber? what I alluded to earlier that there's no stretch on the top end. Right. When they, especially a king, when he hits that, it explodes. So you need the, a little bit of buffer. And if you don't have a lot of angling experience, this acts as a forgiveness. Yes. So you got the forgiveness of the rod. And you got the forgiveness of this. So if that fish is bulldogging, this keeps the hook sound and set in its mouth. Gotcha. Okay. So without that, you run the risk, especially on a big tank, of just snapping up. the leader off. Snap it or pull it out. 
Gotcha. So that, then let's talk the business end from there because I get a lot of questions on this. This is my general rule of thumb that I will That's go. That's like spoon. Well. I will go liter length, length of the rod. Okay. And the reason for that is is if you go much longer than that, this boat's fine because it's a big boat. You can back up, but if you're in a small boat and you got a super long leader, you're not netting your fish. You got hand on it. Right. Yeah, you have to consider this distance. Correct. You're gonna have to go farther back with the because rod. Because once you reel it up to that top, you're done. Yeah. So then you gotta walk back and lift the tips I mean, and that's scoop the that. fish. Gotcha. On the business end, you use a quality ball bearing swivel. I get a lot of questions, what's the difference between a ball bearing and a barrel? The first thing I tell people is buy the more expensive one, it's a ball bearing. Because mm -hmm. it's constantly twisting and turning. And you're not losing a lot of these, so why would you go cheap and you get tangles right. and it's messing your rig up? I run uh, 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader material on right. it. I would set it maybe another foot longer, and then if I got a bad spot, I cut it back. When they get up in, in here, mm -hmm. I put a new one on. Okay. I'm constantly running it through my teeth for abrasion. Well, that, that's good to know for our viewers too, because that's just a standard setup, so people don't have to think why to make longer or shorter. No, length of the rod. Length of the rod, so you don't have baits all over the place in rough water. Yep. Uh, right. One of the things in, in uh, carryover from your bass is the Super Slick V2. Right. I fell in love with that. It's, it's the, great stuff. So you like it for casting. Mm -hmm. I like it because the way it sits on the reel and it's got a smooth on it. Okay. It's probably the best uh, braid for, for dipsies going. Good stuff. So super, yes. Super Slick V2. Super Slick V2. Yep. And then another little trick for a lot of people that ask, they ask why I have different colors on different dipsies. So I can say, okay, blue under the yellow, yellow under the blue. And I can visually see if I have them all the same color, I don't know which line's tangled, but if I put blue on the in, on my ones, yellow on my twos and green on my threes, I know what side of the boat they are. And I know green over yellow, yellow under blue. And you uh, can so that's a great out. tip. Now I'm talking to you, uh, Paul's been a guide for over 30 years on the Great Lakes and that's something that people can really use right off the bat. Well, especially so. when the fish are way back and you got multiples on and you can't see, and you got three guys at the back of the boat reel and you don't know which ones come to the net first. If you see that different colored line, you can look at the reel and say, okay, this guy here is blue, this guy here is green. You need to wait, you need to speed up, you need, and it just, it just keeps the flow going better. Right, and you're running 12. I, I'm having enough trouble running six, to be honest, so. Well, you gotta start somewhere, and I got yeah. a big boat too. Like, I, I have uh, five rod holders on each side. Right. And then I got some on the roof too, and then the riggers and the rest of it. But yeah. we don't always fish that many. I'll tone it down, like if fish bite's real good, a lot of times I'm only fishing four, six rods, because right. I can't keep That's them in the water. Right? That makes yep. sense, yeah. Well, thanks very much for that. I appreciate All right, it. Buddy.